and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to Judas, not Iscariot, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. If you asked me a year ago to name three things I would not be doing on a Sunday morning, this would certainly be at the top of the list. <laughs> Today I have a message for you that I prayed on and sat with for a few weeks now, and I believe God has provided me with something for someone in this room or watching online today. 
When we love God, we make room for him in our hearts, we make room for him in our lives, and we make room for him in our minds. God is not asking us for simply the upper room, like the widow of Zarephath from the first book of Kings. Elijah stayed there for some time, living in an upper room of the widow's house. The woman's son later died of an illness, and in her anger and grief, she blamed Elijah for his death. She assumed God was judging her for her sin. But Elijah cried out to God, Lord my God, let this boy's life return to him. And the child was restored to life. When the woman saw this, she said, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is the truth. After the woman saw this miracle, she believed that the word of Elijah was surely the word of God. And just like the scripture we heard today from the Gospel of John says, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Now Elijah did this, and all she gave him was the upper room of her house. Imagine what we can do if we give God more than the upper room. If we gave him all of us, just as he gave us his only begotten son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the book of Revelation, we hear, and his name will be on their foreheads. So how do we make room for God? How do we keep his name on our foreheads? Certainly, we could get a tattoo or use a permanent marker and just write it on our foreheads. Do I have any volunteers? <laughs> Now, if we write God on our foreheads or tattoo it, how would we even know it is there? See, we would have to look in the mirror to see it, or rely on someone else's odd stares or comments reminding us that it is there. But to truly see deeper and to see God working inside of us, we need to look deeper than what the mirror can provide. We sometimes need others to remind us or even tell us and show us that God is here. We, when we look in the mirror, we only see what the world sees, which is our flesh appearance. God is not concerned with our flesh appearance. Mm -mm. He is concerned with our hearts. So how do we see into our heart? Certainly through science, we can see all our vessels and the intricacies of our heart as an organ. Now the heart is the, sh is the hardest working muscle of all the muscles in the body. Yet it is the one muscle in the body that most ignore. It's an invisible muscle. And just like the heart is invisible, what is on our hearts is often invisible as well. We feel it working. We know it's working. But we cannot always see it working. I believe that is how the Holy Spirit works. Sometimes we can feel it working and know it is working, but it takes a concentrated effort to see and feel it. Let's all take a moment and feel our hearts beating. You can feel it, right? And if we put our ear to someone's heart, we can hear it. We can hear it pumping, and if we check our pulse, we can feel it working. This is how God and the Holy Spirit works. When we seek, we will find. When we ask, we will receive. And when we knock, the door will be opened. As we feel our pulse, have we acknowledged that this is what keeps us alive? This small muscle is responsible for so much of our life, yet it just operates. We do not have to think about it pumping all day and night. It just does it, and so we are alive. This is how God works. God is here for us and with us and in us, and he works in our lives without us constantly asking or thinking about him working. Now be careful. Do not misconstrue my words. We need to seek God. The prophet Jeremiah says, when you search for me, you will find me, if you seek me with all your heart. Just like we need to care for our heart's health, how we care for our heart is also how we care for God. By making good decisions, eating healthy, and exercising. Our body is our temple, and to God be the glory for such an amazing creation. Mm -hmm. So how do we do this? In my opinion, it is done by constantly acknowledging God's presence in our lives. Just like we care for our hearts by making the decisions that Jesus would want us to make, to love our neighbors as ourselves and to forgive others and to care for each other. 
by eating healthy. And this is not manna or bread, but our daily bread. We need to read and meditate on God's words by exercising, by going out into the world and accomplishing our church mission to know Christ and to make him known. The disciples had Jesus, the Messiah, as so boldly confessed by Peter, but even they did not fully believe, and that is evident in today's gospel reading. This reading is part of the farewell discourse. Jesus knows his disciples are struggling with what is to come, and so he gives them some comfort. They still struggle, so he tells them what will happen before it happens so they may believe when it does occur. This is a technique I often use when personal training or teaching someone something. I tell them what they will feel or what will happen before it happens, and like magic, they believe. This often happens to this day, but I can remember when I first experienced it when I hired my first personal trainer when I was 16 years old. He told me exactly what I would feel before I felt it, and bam, I thought he was a genius or some kind of magician. <laughs> Jesus told his disciples what would happen before it happened to comfort them knowing that is what they needed. But guess what? They still needed comfort when it happened. This shows us that no matter how prepared we are when we lose someone we love, it will always be hard. Getting that phone call knowing or not knowing what is coming will always be hard. Losing a loved one is always hard. Jesus tells us in our scripture today that he is going to the Father and that if they believe, they should be glad he is going. They should rejoice. Jesus does in fact leave them and go to the Father as we all know. But he is also still present in their lives. We could say he is on their foreheads. And he would have to be for them to accomplish all that which he purposed. For God's will for them was certainly not a small order God's will for us is not always a small order either. But rejoice. I tell you, we have the advocate, the comforter, the helper, the intercessor, counselor, strengthener, the Holy Spirit, which is the gift that Jesus gave us. If we look a few lines before this scripture, we can clearly see Jesus using a bit of repetition to his disciples. Jesus says in line 10, The words I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who lives in me does his works. Then in line 24, Jesus says, The word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. He also repeats that he is in the Father, and the Father is in him. So why the repetition? Were they not listening the first time he said it? I believe they were. But I also believe it's so important that he wants to make sure they truly heard it and understand exactly what he's saying to them. He speaks on behalf of the Father, and that the Father is in him. The Father is in all of us, and his presence is felt in his beautiful church, but just like our hearts, we must feel it. He knows the disciples are troubled and fearful, and he gives them comfort in line 27 when he gives them the gift of peace. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or fearful. He knows what they are feeling before they feel it, and he knows what they are thinking before he, they think it, and trust me, he knows our thoughts and feelings before we have a clue what we are thinking. And he will provide us the comfort we need when we need it. But again, we have to be looking for it. So what is peace? We often think of the word peace as the absence of fighting and chaos. In slang, the kids of my day said peace as they were leaving, meaning goodbye. So is Jesus saying goodbye to his disciples? Well, he is. As this section is known as the Farewell Discourse, which is John chapters 14 to 17. But, I'm not letting you off the hook that easy. And the word peace isn't simply goodbye. Peace is a gift from Jesus to his disciples and to us. So what is peace? Jesus gave peace as a gift to us in the midst of turbulent situations. His definition of peace was different from world peace. He cared most deeply about peace in our hearts. In Hebrew, the word is shalom. As written by Jason Sarosky, the word shalom is as ancient as the land itself. It is peppered throughout scripture, embedded in the familiar names of cities and people, such as Jerusalem, foundation of peace, and King Solomon, whose name means peaceful, and is a linguistic building block of Jewish language and history. Shalom is regularly used as a familiar greeting, but it holds a meaning that was used by Jesus to describe his kingdom 
and speaks to the very hopes and longings of the human heart. The word shalom appears over 200 times in the Bible, a strong indicator of its importance. The word rest might work as a translation for shalom, but it would not do justice to the word. This is probably why peace was the chosen translation rather than the word rest. Though peace is a more apt translation of shalom, it still does not quite capture the nuance or importance of the word. Shalom was used as both a greeting and farewell. It wasn't just meant to wish a person a lack of war or struggle. Rather, shalom goes deeper. Shalom might be called the peace of the Lord. It is completeness, soundness, well-being, complete reconciliation. One of the names of God is Yahweh Shalom, or the Lord of Peace. And Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. True Shalom is only reached through God. Shalom, true Shalom, will be a restoration of the peace that existed in the beginning and will be the peace that we experience in the new Jerusalem, the new city of peace. After the crucifixion, the disciples of Jesus were experiencing anything but Shalom. They were not at peace, but were in fear, confusion, and were lacking in purpose of what they were to do next. I must confess, standing up here preaching about peace at this time in our world is not easy for me. My heart is in much pain as I mourn for all the lives impacted by these horrific events in Buffalo and California and the awful reminder that there is so much hate and evil still in this world. You would think with inflation and COVID and rising gas prices, the war in Ukraine, we would have enough to deal with. We have all dealt with so much pain and loss, and unfortunately, there is more. There is no room for this in our world. We need to come together as a community and as a world and have the hard conversations and end all of this hatred and evil. While I know I cannot solve all of these problems today, I do know that if we all work together, we can accomplish more than our minds can fathom. I would like to take a moment of silence for the one million lives lost due to COVID, as well as all the lives lost in the Ukraine and in the recent shootings. May our God comfort all of us in, this, in these times and provide us with the peace that only he can give us. But I do have faith, and here is why. John 20, 19, it is in the midst of the disciples' fear and confusion and lacking purpose that Jesus appears to them and once again speaks shalom over them and their fears. On the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace, shalom be with you. What an encouragement that the first thing Jesus speaks over his bewildered disciples is a proclamation of peace, a reassurance of his promise, shalom. I believe Jesus is speaking this same message of peace, shalom, to all of us here today. Jesus is in the final stages of preparing the disciples for what is ahead of them, and the journey will be a difficult one. He tells them things before they happen to gain their trust and their confidence, and they will need all of this in order to accomplish that which God set before them. For their mission is great, and so will be their reward. The peace P-I-E-C-E, -E, that Jesus gave his disciples and all of us, is the Holy Spirit. It is our gift to personally guide us. It is the peace, P-E-A-C-E, -E, of the Lord. Like I always say, we cannot control people's actions. We can only control our response. Let's come together and look and pray for peace. As it is written in Matthew, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. As followers of Christ, we are called to create peace. In a few moments, we will all exchange an offering of peace. With this exchange, let us think of the word shalom. As we close today's sermon, I would like to show you one more important part of this beautiful scripture. Jesus tells his disciples, If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. Jesus is preparing them for what is to come with this comforting text. His time here is just about done and he is leaving them in the flesh, but his spirit will be with them. This is troubling and scary to his disciples, and it has not happened yet. As Christians, we all know that Christ died and is resurrected and alive in our presence always. But the disciples at this moment did not know this was the case, even though they were told in advance by the Lord himself. Many of us present have lost someone we love or have experienced some form of trauma in our lives, 
Perhaps we are experiencing it right now. Well, I am here to tell you, God is with you. God is with us. He is here right now, and he is here during our troubles, even when we do not feel or see his presence. In fact, I believe when God seems the furthest, he is actually the closest. In our times of darkness, our times of devastation, our times of loss, he has not left us. I was at a funeral for a friend a few weeks ago, and I observed so many people devastated by a tragic and sudden death. I watched a mother collapsing every step she took because of the pain of losing her son far too soon. But I also observed a family coming together for her strength and carry her, hold her, and comfort her. I also witnessed God working in this situation. I heard someone say, my brother and I have not spoken in seven years, and our relationship has been torn apart. But as soon as I heard about Hawk's passing, I called my brother, and we are working on our relationship. This is just the first I immediately heard, but hearing that, I know God is working. He is renewing hearts and minds amid devastation, because that is what God does. Friends, remember, you are not alone. We all face unexpected trials. God promises to offer peace and comfort if we continually seek him. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with all of you. Amen. We believe in one God, the, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. The prayers of the people for the sixth Sunday of Easter. The response to each collect is, Glory and praise to you, O living God. Jesus Christ came into the world to give us peace. Let us offer prayers to God for all whose hearts are troubled and afraid. For this holy gathering and for those who enter our circle of faith, for those who have recently been baptized or admitted to communion in the church, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Chip, our bishop, in the Anglican cycle of prayer, for the Church of the Province of Southeast Asia, in the Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, for Church of the Ascension Gloucester, and for the search for our next bishop, for Ron, our priest, and Keith, our deacon, and Mark, our guest preacher, for all bishops, presbyters, deacons, religious, seminarians, and ministers in Christ, for all who minister in Christ's name, 
and all the holy people of God. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For the world and its leaders, for those living in troubled lands, especially New Mexico, Colorado, and California, Ukraine, Iraq, Iran, Lebanon and Syria, Israel, Gaza and the West Bank, Afghanistan, India and Myanmar, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Yemen and Somalia, Tonga, North Korea and South Korea, Haiti, Cuba, Mexico, El Salvador, Honduras and Venezuela. Glory and, and praise to you, the living, living God. God. For our country, for those in positions of public trust, especially Joe, our president, Philip, our governor, Dennis, the mayor of this community, and the leaders of all our communities. For police officers, firefighters, first responders, and those who guard the peace. For honesty and compassion in our government. Glory and praise, and praise to you, O living God. God. For an end to racism and the abuse of God's children, that we may live together with charity and in wholeness. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For the sick and the suffering, especially Randy and Claire Rokiski, Lee Henderson, Marsha Bauer, Pamela, Joanne Ivis, Christine Massey, Tony, Ray McManus, Claudia Gilbert, Richard Minor, Roy Barry, Dick Meyer, Linda, Judy Marine, Danny Saunders, Jim Agins, Susan Elizabeth Van Horn Santani, Landon, Robert Massey, Jennifer Agins, Anne, Les Plum, Jennifer Petty, Rachel Mullen, Sheila Murphy, Mary Ann Salonic, and David. For the people of Buffalo and Milwaukee, for all those in danger and need, prisoners, captives, and their families, the hungry, homeless, and oppressed, and those who feel remote from God. Glory and praise, praise to you, O living God. For the people of this parish who are celebrating birthdays this week, Kayla Marie Egans, Ryan Schofield, Anthony Pironi, Sam Galpin, Edward Gilroy, Caitlin Chudy, Sheila Furman, Maria Elena Cardinale, Rose Rivera, Karen Whitmore, Joseph Callahan, Dylan Tomaska, Stephanie Soden, and Erica Doherty. For those celebrating wedding anniversaries this week, especially Stephen and Ruth Roll, James Reichart and Deidre Kramer, Jose and Gloria Rivera, John and Vivian Ellis, Gregory and Karen Pasquale, and Kristen and Chris Warwesniak. For those we remember with gifts at the altar, especially Albert and Marion Weidlich. For those serving in our armed forces, especially Nicholas Lofton, James Cerisi, Brandon Akins, Jordan Greenup, Bert Ferguson, Trey Robinson, Raymond Campos, Brian Finelli, Jerry Perez, Bob Scott, David Jones. For the ordination of Brian Burgess as Bishop of the Diocese of Springfield, which took place yesterday. For ourselves, our families and friends, and those we love. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For the dying and the dead, especially Edward F. Schaub, Elizabeth Morrison, Bernard C. Bruckner, Martha Chapman, Dwayne Wilson, Carmelo J. Vidala, Henry M. Biggin, and for all who remember them in the hope of the resurrection. Glory and praise to you, O living God. Remembering our most glorious and blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Francis, Blessed Altem, Bishop, Poet, and Scholar, Blessed John the Evangelist, our patron, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord our God, 
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, who gives us the water of life. Hear our prayers for all peoples and bring us at last to your holy city, Jerusalem, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Congregation may be seated, choir may be seated. Good morning, welcome to St. John's Church. We are delighted to see all of you in person and online. So today, with Mark Hernandez preaching, that is yet one more piece of evidence of his faithfulness and his excitement and his joy in the life of the church and his discernment process leading to the diaconate. I have a very little gift to present to you, Mark, in thanksgiving for your ministry here at St. John's Church, um, for you and your wonderful wife, Michelle, and your children, Aiden and Caleb. We love you, and um, we continue the process leading to the diaconate. You can count on our continued prayers and love. So this past week, I had lunch with some of my clergy friends, and we talked a little bit about all those people we know who died throughout this entire last uh, period of time of the COVID. And it was an opportunity for us to simply pause and reflect upon the names of the people that we knew and those people we did not know. We were also given the opportunity to think about all those blessings that we have received in the life of our respective churches. Also this past week, I was invited to offer the invocation and benediction at something called 200 Club. It is a nonprofit organization that honors our local heroes, police, fire, first aid squad, first and community responders. And it took place at the palace. Don't feel too bad for me, I had filet mignon. It was. It was awful, it was just terrible. But it was an opportunity to pause in our busy lives to thank God for all of those local heroes. One of them was married and baptized in this church. His name is Nick Rice-Vudo. He is a fireman and he's also working at the Somerset County Jail. He moved from Somerville, and now lives in Hunterdon County but nonetheless is still attached in many ways to St. John's Church. He was one of the local heroes honored because of his heroic work on, um, in the aftermath of Hurricane Ida. I don't know about you, but I always don't provide enough time to pause and thank God for all those local heroes in our midst. I hope that you do that spend a little bit of time in the afternoon with an extra cup of coffee and just give God thanks for all those people who allow us to have safe places, healthy places in our community. I, for one, am grateful to God for them. Are there any particular other announcements that need to be made? I don't think so. If you are so inclined to meet with me during coffee hour, I would love to discuss some estimates we've been given to have our driveways repaved. It's not very sexy work, but nonetheless, it is important work in the life of our church. We are called, all of us as stewards, to be mindful of the community in which we live and its space. And so if we have potholes, and I'm constantly reminded, Father Ryan, we have potholes, please fix them. I call upon you to help through this process in having our driveways repaved. We have a couple estimates 
if you have any thoughts, I'd love to hear them. Um, and then otherwise, we're going to go to the vestry and hit them up for some money. Now, the trouble is, we're not swimming in money, are we? We need to be faithful. And so stewardship is a part of our life. And um, I know that you all join me in the effort to keep this place safe for all of our members, but also for all of our guests and visitors and friends, people who come here to this church we call home. Walk in love as Christ loved us and give himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God. As you're able, please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. And by his death he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken to the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For these last days you sent him to be incarnate for the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, the Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Mary, Joseph, Francis, John, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us stand to pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen.
the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect to do his will, that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.